Hey guys, it's Scott with Scotty B Cards. This episode, I have ranked the top 10 flagship sets from the last 15 years. Flagship is series one, to an update from Tops, and so I took all the rookies from each and every set and I have looked to see which ones I think are the best. Before we jump into it, if you are a sports card, baseball card, or trading card fan, this channel is for you. We post three times each and every week and it's all content directed exactly towards this audience. So hit that subscribe button so you don't miss anything. Okay, to jump right into it, here are my top 10. So at number 10, we have the 2018 Top Series 1 set. This is one of the most underrated products out in the hobby market right now. For the longest time, you can get a hobby box of this for 50, 60 bucks, but recently people have realized there's some good rookie potential in it. So the players in this set is Rafael Devers, Walker Bueller, Jack Flaherty, Ozzy Albies, Victor Robles, and Alex Verdugo. There's other rookies as well I didn't mention, but these are the ones I view as the best players in this set that can carry it. And the reason why I feel like this is the number 10 set of the last 15 years is simply because there's a lot of potential in pitching and hitting. Verdugo looks awesome in Boston. You know, Ozzy Albies, he is a second baseman who's overshadowed by Acuna, who debuted this same year. But Ozzy Albies is still a stud. He probably will be an all-star for the next, you know, three, four, five years. Started out the 2021 season rough, but he can come back from that really easy. The 162 game season is a lot easier to salvage a season than the 60 game season. Devers has proven it and then kind of fallen off, but that was in the 60 game season. It's hard to take that as a full sample size. And Walker Bueller is looked at as the next ace in baseball as long, in my opinion, as the Dodgers let him pitch. So this is just kind of a set that I just think is overlooked. So that's my number 10 and let's go to number nine. Number nine, we have the 2020 Top Series 1. I did not know where to rank this set because it has a ton of potential, tons of top players. You have Kyle Lewis, Nico Horner, Dustin May. Dustin May is a guy I haven't talked about enough, to be honest. Gavin Lux, Zach Gallon, uh, Jesus Luzardo, Jordan Alvarez, Randy Rosarina, Bo Bichette, Trent Grisham, and more players. You know, there's Nick Solak, and there's, there's a whole bunch of other players that are super solid from Series 1. But in Series 1, I think the people that will carry this set is going to be Bo Bichette and Gavin Lux. They're both just too good. Obviously, Jordan is going to rake. He's always going to hit well but he might be kind of crippled by being strictly a DH and sometimes in the outfield, but not much. But this is a set I just think has a lot of long-term potential. The problem with 2020 Series 1 is there's a lot of it printed. There's just higher print runs for base cards nowadays than there was in like five, six years ago. But regardless, you cannot deny how much talent is here. Even people like Trent Grisham, he could be a six-war player, win three, four, five gold gloves and, you know, be a first career 30 to 40 war type guy so a lot of potential here i think getting some steeled wax of this set would not be a bad idea at number eight we have 2017 top series one what this set lacks in you know quantity it has quality and the quality i really like is aaron judge and alex bregman tyler glass now and yon mankata thrown in is nice then there's like a nice little sprinkle on top but just a set that has those two players is pretty solid from the last 15 years it's hard to find a set with two players. They've both won runner-up and MVP. If we look back, Bregman possibly should have won it over Trout, but he probably didn't because it's 2019 and they hadn't been exposed for cheating yet. And I'm the biggest Trout fan around. But I'm just saying, his numbers were really good. Aaron Judge, he probably should have won over Jose Altuve in 2017 because that is the year they were cheating. And I don't want to bash the Astros or Astros fan, but that's just my take. He probably should have won that. And even if you look at his numbers, even if he didn't know that he did it, he had a real case for it. So that's my number eight pick. Uh, nothing too flashy, but just two really huge players. Then you have two lesser players like Tyler Glass, Noel and Mankata. Uh, there's other players like Ben Benintendi and other solid players, but nobody that's going to really carry this product anywhere else. After that, we have another 2017 product. It's Topps Update. In Topps Update, you have Cody Bellinger, Matt Chapman, Yoan Mankata again, Denelson Lament, Josh Hader, and Luke Voigt. So the reason why Yoan Mankata is in two sets is because this is the update set which shows him in his new jersey. If you actually look at this Trent Grisham card two sets ago, in 2020 update, he is in a Padres uniform. And so I think it's the same picture or something similar. And so... It's the same thing that happened with Mankata. They show him in this uniform, and this card actually goes for more. If a player has a card in Series 1 or 2 and update, that's a base. Otani is another example, which we'll get to later. Then the update card almost always goes for more than the previous set. Randy Arozarena is another player who had a similar situation, how he was with the Cardinals in Series 1, and he was with the Rays in Topps Update. But this set is carried by Cody Bellinger and Matt Chapman. You know, those two players are amazing. Cody Bellinger, I think, is 24, 25, won an MVP gold glove outfielder his problem is just health and inconsistency inconsistency in how he in 2017 he put up he won rookie of the year and had at the time the record for most home runs in a season by a rookie in the nl which is 39 that was broken by pete alonzo 
in 2019. Uh, but overall, Cody Bellinger was a stud then. He, then he had a down year, and down year was still good, but it wasn't elite. And then he had his MVP year, which in the first half he was beyond elite, kind of how Acuna's are playing right now. Uh, he was there. He was like just amazing. And then he kind of had a regular, like good season, second half. And then after that, the next year he was not great. And then hopefully this year he can bounce back and become the player that we all know he can be. Matt Chapman, I am an Ardano fan, so I like to say Ardano is better. But there is a legitimate argument for Matt Chapman being the better player. If you look at like OPS Plus, because Ardano played in Coors and he plays in Oakland, you know. Uh, Arnold's not there anymore, so I'm excited that he's playing well this year, but you get my point, and he has a very good glove. So, Luke Voigt, Yankees fans love him. He carries it. Denelson Lamette, I didn't realize he was in this set until I looked at it. He is on the IL right now, but he is a fantastic pitcher for the Padres, so he'll be around forever. And then Josh Hader, probably the best relief pitcher right now in baseball, or up there. His teammate actually might be him. So let's jump to the next set. That is number six. We have 2019 Top Series 2. So this set... I, I really like it because Tatis obviously could be a generational talent, and we like Tatis. We want to see Tatis succeed. Hopefully, he comes back from his injury healthily. And then you have Eloy Jimenez, Pete Alonso. Eloy Jimenez is out for the year. That hurts this set a little bit as well. And Pete Alonso had a rough 2020. Uh, but overall, if this set is actually carried, by my opinion, that short print Vlad. If you look at 2018 Series 2, it has the Acuna. This is the 2019 version with that Vlad, and he is finally playing to his potential. He's having a really good 2021, and I think he's going to have a great year in total. So this set is carried by Tatis and Vlad, in my opinion, but you know Eloy Jimenez, I wouldn't sleep on him yet. I wouldn't say because he's injury prone or anything like that. Is He shouldn't be in the outfield playing defense. He probably should just be DHing because he's been hurt multiple times out there. And Pete Alonso, this year, he could just wake up and have an amazing season. So especially with the Mets, you know, his cards could explode. That's my number six. All right, guys, at 6B, I had to include a B just because it was so close. I have 2015 Tops Update. This is a set that is good and it could be great, but right now it's just good. Right now you have Francisco Lindor who just went to the Mets. That card's worth quite a bit of money right now. And if Francisco Lindor can start playing really well, he's kind of started slow, but if he can start playing well, it could be a massive card. In this same set, you have Carlos Correa, Byron Bucks, and Noah Syndergaard, Joey Gallo, Giovanni Urshela, and more players. This set could be huge if Byron Buxton can kind of put together how he's been in the first part of this year for a full season or two. Then this would be a really sought after set. Same with Carlos Correa. If he can go to a different team, let's say, won't happen, but say he goes somewhere like the Yankees who needs a shortstop. Uh, if he goes there, then I think his cards could explode. And this is a really good target for anybody looking for the true flagship Carlos Correa rookie card. Noah Syndergaard, Joey Gallo, and Gio Rochelle are kind of just the sprinkles on top right now just because they're good, but they're not really fantastic. Noah Syndergaard had the potential and kind of got hurt. So so that is my 6B and on to number five. At number five, number five and number four are two sets I went back and forth on and I'll explain why. And so, you know, these sets are all my opinions. So don't be mad at my rankings. It's just an opinion. Uh, but at number five, we have 2013 Tops Update. This set is loaded. Uh, you have Nolan Arenado, Anthony Rendon, Christian Yelich, Marcelo Zuna, and Garrett Cole. There's more players I didn't include. I just didn't think they were really like superstar caliber. I wouldn't have included Ozuna normally, but because he was so good last year, I know it's a short season, small sample size, but he was so good then, and he's on a really good Braves team now. I included him. But Garrett Cole has been one of the best pitchers of the last two or three years. And then you have Christian Yelich, who probably will bounce back to his MVP form. He hit a ball off his kneecap and broke it two years ago, and he kind of hasn't been the same since, but that's something I think he'll work through. Rendon, he's just Mr. Consistency, super quiet, not super loud, does his job in, in and out. Then you have Arenado, who probably will be a Hall of Famer. He's almost there in my book. You know, he has eight gold gloves entering a season and I think three platinum gloves. And on top of that, he's led the league in home runs three times. He's led the league in RBIs two times. And with the Cardinals, he's played great so far. So I don't think he's going to slow down anytime soon. So that's my number five. Number four, again, I kind of switching these two back and forth. Number four, I have 2014 Tops Update. And the reason I was switching them back and forth is because, you know, in 2013 Tops Update, there's five players that I think are good. 2014 Tops Update, there's three players I think are pretty good. But the reason I picked 2014 Tops Update as the number four pick is because Mookie Betts and DeGrom combined, it's a crazy combination. And George Springer's no slouch either. You know, George Springer's been amazing. If you take away his cheating scandal, people would be all over George Springer. But Mookie Betts, clear number two player in baseball, at least up until this year. Acuna may be taking that title because he's hitting so well. Soto could be knocking on that door. But overall, Mookie Betts has some of the best tools in all of the sport. So he'll be a Hall of Famer. 
He's basically there. He just needs to be healthy for a few years and he'll have that. Jacob deGrom is not somebody I can say is a Hall of Famer yet. It's too hard to say he's going to reach that milestone, but he could. He has the potential to be a very good pitcher. If he can maintain the success he has now for the next few years, I think he will get there. Two full seasons, three full seasons of Cy Young quality pitching. DeGrom will probably get there just because Hall of Fame voters are looking more at a period of dominance versus counting stats for pitchers because pitchers are getting less innings because of just the way that the teams are managed. So because of that reason, I think there's two Hall of Fame potential players. I put them here, and Mookie Betts is just so much better than really anybody else that's been on this list so far, in my opinion. That's why I have it. And that is number four. At number three, we have 2008 Tops Update. I was going to do top 10 sets of the last 10 years, but I had to do 15 years so I could include this set. And reason being is because it has two of the most dominant pitchers of our generation, you know, the last 20 years in it which is crazy to consider with Clayton Kershaw and Max Scherzer. Both of these cards are extremely low pops. Both of these cards are very short printed compared to the modern sets like 2021 top series one. And on top of that, I included Evan Longoria because I think he'll be a Hall of Famer as well. He's very close and I think it's the way Hall of Fame voting is becoming. If he's not in on the writer's ballot, I think he'll get in with the Veterans Committee eventually. Uh, and then you have Carlos Gonzalez. I just included him because I love Carlos Gonzalez, and I really wish he could have had a longer career because he was awesome in Colorado. So 2008 Tops Update, doesn't need much explanation, super solid set. I think each of these players both have three Cy Youngs, Kershaw has an MVP, uh, Evan Longoria, if you look at his numbers, like for era adjusted, like OPS plus and whatnot, when he played out in uh, with the Rays, he was really good. I, I sleep on Evan Longoria. I recently realized how good he was. I picked up some of his rookies because I got a Bowman Chrome autograph for $25, which is crazy when you see players who haven't even played a game in baseball who probably will never even be close to Evan Longoria going for four or 500 bucks. So that's my number three pick. At number two, I have 2018 Tops Update. This has both quality and quantity. There are so many good players in the set. This isn't even all of them. These are the best ones in my opinion, but you have Acuna, Ronald Acuna, Juan Soto, Glaber Torres, Shohei Otani, Shane Bieber, Austin Meadows, and Michael Soroka. So this set is just solid. With Acuna, right now, like I said, this is very probably not going to be good to talk about it in this sense because a year from now, somebody might watch this video and be like, I don't know what you're talking about, but he is killing it. He is by far the best player in baseball so far. Up until the middle of April, Acuna is killing it. And then you have Juan Soto, who's just on base machine at age 22, which is insane to consider. You have Otani, who's finally playing to his full potential with Joe Madden kind of giving him the full reins. He's pitching, he's hitting, and he's hitting well. He's one of the top hitters in all the American League. Torres... Yankees fans don't love Torres right now. He is not a great defender and his bat has not been as powerful, but he has that huge upside. He's already a two-time All-Star. I think Torres will come back. He'll be just fine, in my opinion. Shane Bieber, he won the Triple Crown in pitching last year. Uh, on top of that, you have Michael Soroka, who was pitching amazing before he tore his Achilles, I believe. And then Austin Meadows traded from the Pirates to the Rays this year and really started to play well. So overall, you just have an amazing assortment of players, and I think this could be the next top set behind the set I'm about to show you. But before I show you that number one set, I want to give an honorable mention to 2001 Tops Traded. So you'll see I have the Chrome Ichiro. Ichiro wasn't in Top Traded with his base card, I don't believe, but his Chrome Top Traded was in the set. Albert Pujols base and Chrome was in the set, and then you have this awesome Ichiro and Pujols dual rookie card, which I think is very undervalued and slept on just because it has both of, you know, two amazing Hall of Famers, first ballot Hall of Famers for both of them. But overall, I wanted to do the last 20 years, but then I didn't want to deal with the years from 05 to 07 because the way the rookies were actually considered rookies is different than it is from 2006 on. So I did the last 15, but overall, this is an honorable mention. I think this would have been in my top three anyways, just because you have between these two players probably six to 7,000 hits. Uh, 6,000 hits is probably where it's more at. And on top of that, probably 150 to 160 war combined. So anyways, tour number one, probably obvious to everybody, and that is 2011 Tops Update. Look at the players in this set, and this is not all of them. There's even more. Mike Trout, Jose Altuve, Paul Goldschmidt, Anthony Rizzo, DJ LeMahieu, J.D. Martinez, Eric Cosmer, Charlie Blackman, Brad Hand, and Mike Moustakis. Just an amazing set. The Trout alone probably would put this set high, but once you add in Paul Goldschmidt, who I think will probably get in the Hall of Fame, he's close. Altuve is going to be, I don't know if he will. 
He is only 30, and I think people forget how young he is, and he could age well with a lot of hits. Uh, Rizzo, I don't think he'll get there, but overall great player. J.D. Martinez is great. DJ LeMahieu has been awesome. Top five, I believe, in the last two years in MVP voting. Charlie Blackman, represent the Rockies, but just a stud with the bat. And then you have a really dominant reliever with Brad Hand. Eric Hosmer signed that huge contract with the Padres, and you get the rest. Mike Moustak has even had, I think, for one season, the record for Royals home runs. But overall, I kind of just combined how what the stats were for Topps Update. Uh, in Tops Update, you have four MVPs, 297.1 war in one set, 40 All-Star Game appearances, 26 Silver Sluggers, and 11 Gold Gloves. Overall, I think it's a no-doubter. I think eventually 2018, Tops Update may be able to get to this point, but until then, just look at that list. It's amazing. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know how you would have ranked this differently down below and who you think is slept on. Appreciate it, and have a good one, guys. I'll talk to you later.